All right, guys, so for this next project, we're going to... Anyways, we're going to... Spencer doesn't win a lot of games, so when he does, we tend to give him his space, especially when there's cash involved. See what I mean? Hey guys, welcome to the Cool Mini Monthly. I am Spencer Reeve and I'm Jared Miller. We're going to be your host every month from now on. So this is the first episode. It's exciting. Uh, yeah, uh, basically talking about what we have coming out this month uh, from Cool Mini or not and where you can get it and what yep. you need to do to score a copy yourself, basically. Yeah. Uh, being that this is the first episode, that we're going to rewind the tape a little bit. Yes. And uh, we're going to talk about basically the stuff that came out last month, our big releases from last month, which we actually had two. Yes. So uh, why don't we talk about the first one? Cool. So uh, from September, yeah, we have uh, the World of Smog on Her Majesty's Service. Yeah, right. Um, I'm a big fan of this game. Great uh, game. I don't think uh, many people know as much about it as the next game we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a it's a kind of a light euro. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a puzzle mechanic. Yeah, it's which... euro style with the puzzle with puzzle elements. Um, it blends those two together really well, and yeah. the fact that you are doing worker placement. But the board, which is kind of like a giant clock almost with mm -hmm. lots of gears, is constantly shifting because each yes. gear can turn. And it auto turns when you buy. When you work or place yeah. and buy, the two gear turns. So um, the gears also determine your path as you move through the board. Yes. Which, yeah, and as you turn them, there are certain things that can block off paths. Mm -hmm. So it's that constant changing nature of those gears. Um, Perspective that, plays a yeah. huge point because what, what side of the board you're on determines how much you're paying for the items mm -hmm. that you're buying. Uh, it determines your path to exit, yes. um, and that all comes back together in these cards that you have yeah. that are like these power cards where you can like turn gears, you can move people around, mm -hmm. or you can even pick the board up and rotate the whole board, yeah, the which cards, is super cool. The cards set it off, I think. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, the, the concept is really neat, and it's uh, almost chess-like, yeah, honestly, yeah. in yeah. terms of the strategy that's going on. Uh, but those cards are crazy, especially when you literally, everyone stays in their seats, and the board, you just pick it up, and you rotate okay. the whole board. So it can, I've had that throw off my uh, strategy just mm -hmm. completely because the whole perspective is now different. Yeah, it's, a, so. it's definitely a very unique game. Uh, it's got the backstab elements with those cards because mm -hmm. you can kind of screw people over with them. You can also yeah. set yourself up for power plays where you unload a bunch of cards. Um, it's got the Euro element of I need these things yep. and I'm buying these things. There's a lot of secret knowledge going on. Yes. Your exit is secret knowledge. The exact uh, uh, ethers that you need to win is secret knowledge. Yes. So, so there's all that. It's a very, it's a very unique game because of all the kind of uh, inventive ways it borrows from other genres, things, right? right? And and that may sound like a lot, but it's actually pretty simple to play. It's maybe one of the most simplest. Yeah, sure. Right? Yeah. Super I, simple. Super simple. Uh, it's very, simple. it's a very simple Euro style game. Yes. Because you're, usually Euro style games feel, uh, you feel almost inundated with the the amount of things that you can do during a turn, right. and your your long, basically your long strat. Yeah. For winning, mm -hmm. uh, can be influenced by what everybody else is doing, but also can be very like kind of. Uh, just complex, right? Yeah, yeah. And this game, is, it's very simple. This is what you need to win. It's very clear how you can do it. The only thing is there's people who kind of screw right. you over and exactly. the board's constantly changing. Yep. So, so it's cool. cool. And the uh, art and design in this game is phenomenal. phenomenal. I don't know if it picks so. up on the camera here, but it's a gold foil leafing, mm -hmm. leafing around all this uh, edging, which is really, really cool. Yeah. So uh, this is in stores now, now yeah. and um, it's great. So I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. The next one. Roman Bones! Yeah. Uh, which is our big box, lots of miniatures, MOBA style game. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's... What's a MOBA? Well, that's... You know what? Thanks for asking, man. Uh, a MOBA is basically a video game. It's basically a video game. This is a video game. No, hold on. Okay. okay. Let me get there. All right. All right. I got confused. It's, <laughs> MOBAs are popular in the video game industry. Okay. There are, it is where each... Uh, six players each take th uh, six on six, okay, and they control three lanes. And they guys, these little minions, kind of march towards each other. Nice. 
and then you each player controls a hero. Okay. Of course, you can't always have six players. So in our Scott, on our game, it's three on three sides. So in Rum and Bones, it's three versus three. Okay. You have basically uh, you know three heroes on each side. Okay. So the game scales up to six players, but you can play with two, right? So like I'd control three heroes. Yeah. Three heroes. Exactly. Okay. And then our minions almost work like the zombicide zombies. They have these lanes that they march down, and they just kind of cancel each other out as right. they attack. Now you can strengthen and weaken your deployment mm -hmm. uh, of the of the spawns, so that maybe you throw a couple big guys here and more smaller guys this way because yes. you're making a push. Support certain lanes. Yeah, support. Yeah, ones, right. exactly. Uh, but those guys are so weak that really the everything really is determined by the heroes. Yeah, and, and the strategies that you're doing with the heroes. And the game is very thematic. It feels kind of like a Pirates of the Caribbean-esque action movie, right? Like yeah, it's exactly. over the top, it's more Disney fun than like historical fun, right? Right, like, yeah. I mean, and, and it comes through in the character design too, yeah. I mean, just the, the heroes. The art style is really yeah. very cartoony, mm -hmm. and, but still very cool, right? Yes. And it's not silly, but it's got cool, cool style and it definitely feels more action movie fun as yeah. opposed to like, oh, it, it, I have to bank my ship. There's no ship combat outside of the deck cannon which can blast Guys off basically. Right, yeah, you can shoot you, out the minions from using the deck cannon. Yeah, because each yeah. whatever side you're playing has its own boat. Yep. Right, its own ship. They've already docked. They've already. Right. They've. Yeah. You're boarding, and those are the lanes that are forming, and um, it's the to step back to the minions. Mm -hmm. That's I think really cool because you see when you see this game set up, mm. it's it looks like a lot because there's a lot yeah, there's yeah. a lot of minis in this box. Yeah, right? for sure. But what's nice is that simple AI mm -hmm. of those minions. It's like you don't have to worry about them. Besides, like you said, strengthen the uh, certain lanes and stuff like that. Do a push um, here because right. all the other, all my opponent's heroes are on the other side of the ship. Right. So I'll push here yeah. and kind of try to push through. And yeah. then lets you focus on all those different heroes that uh, have tons of character and are very unique. Right. Yeah. You have like the captains who can kind of do a bit of everything. Yeah. You have guys who can support the gunners who are range, range and have like area effects spells and stuff right. like that. Certain, so certain guys and. And uh, although the that, that that brings the the point to the heroes, which is that they're not cookie cutter. They're not right. like, hey, the the undead pirates are pretty much their heroes are pretty much the same as the Wellsport Brotherhood, which is like the human pirates, the right. kind of standard action movie pirate. They're not. They have their own skills, and they have like the Bone Devils, which are the undead, right. play a certain way, and the Wellsport Brotherhood plays a certain way. And that actually is a good segue into this box. Yes. Because this is a Mazu's Dreadful Curse. It's the expansion that's coming this month. So these are out now. Yes. So, uh, Modern Magic Service, Core Rum and Bones, out now. Out now, yeah. Yeah, and there's also some, like, uh, dice sets that uh, are available. Yeah. And um, there is a, I, we don't have it pictured on the table, but there's also a Wellsport and a Bone Devils hero pack. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, so adds that's some, also available. Which is, which is the the point is is that those are, the more heroes you have, similar to Zombicide, similar to Arcadia Quest, they have different skills. It right. changes the way you your strategy is going to be for victory, and it changes the way the game is. It's almost played because you're going to play differently with those right. heroes, right? Which brings us to Ma Mazu's, and Mazu's Dreadful Curse is even bigger than a Mercenary Pack. Yes. In the sense of the way it's going to change the game. Mm -hmm. Because what this game does is it introduces the uh, Chinese crew, right? Which have a panda, which is awesome, nice. right? And uh, they have three boats as opposed to in this box you have two big boats, right? The Bone Devils and Wellsport, yeah. Each have one boat. In Mazu's you have three boats, and they do two, which are like their little junks, right? right? They do two on one side and one on the other. I mean, and I think they're pretty good boats. Yeah, well, they're that's what they're called. Oh, that's what, I get that's it. the name of the boat. It's the type of boat. Okay. Well, you'll see. All right. I don't know if you'll see. Uh, so the the they do two on one side and one on the other, and it changes basically even the flow of the map. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is these guys also have this teleportation thing, these like like wind tunnels they can jump into okay. that allows them to jump around their boats pretty quickly. And that's super um, different than this. That's way different yeah. because you can do rigging checks in this where you yeah. can actually again like a movie swing from yeah. one boat to the other. But it's a it's a risk versus reward. The more the farther you're going to swing, the more likely you are going to tumble yeah. overboard. I mean, the, I definitely went into the water. Yes, I was trying to look cool. And you guys know uh, if you've seen any of the gameplay videos, you know how Spincy Reeve rolls some dice. Yeah. And he's been in the water. I've taken a bath more than yeah. I would like to admit. Uh, so it is cool that you can kind of jump around. You can't wind tunnel from like one your boat to their boat, but right. you can jump between Bounce your boats. Your, yeah. Your boats, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you know it spreads the victory points out a little bit differently. So. Right. The guy who's in the center has a uh, kind of a different path to success mm -hmm. than he normally would. So yeah, with the box, you're going to get the three boats. 
and you're gonna get five heroes in it. Okay. Which is, a, you know, not only the, the layout of the map being different, but the extra heroes who, as we said before, have different abilities, changes the way you're gonna play the game, right. uh, changes kind of your strategies for victory, and again, the map layout changing is a big deal, because yeah. this is, there's really only one way to lay the map out in this box, but once you start adding these expansions, it changes the game. Um, and that's cool, because, uh, I think not knowing MOBAs, but in a lot yeah. of, in you know, some of the bigger ones, you're kind of stuck with one map. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's it's neat that we can change this up. Yeah, I so. agree. I think it's super cool that uh, we have another expansion coming out next month, which we'll mm -hmm. talk about in the next update. But uh, it's going to change the map again too. So That's I love cool. I love yeah. the fact that the, the designers and developers for this game. That was their idea. Like yeah. every time you do an expansion, not only are you getting new heroes and new boats, but the boats are going to be new maps, basically. That's awesome. Yeah. So really don't forget, mm -hmm. they also come with their own tide deck. Oh yeah, yeah. So the tide deck, if you haven't played Roman Bones, uh, which is something we didn't mention in the core box, right. so the tide deck is basically the special abilities that each crew has. So the two crews that are inside this uh, box have mm -hmm. their own tide deck, and that has own special abilities, special skills that you actually uh, can cause the kind of screw up the other player's plans, yeah. do things like weaken them, buff your guys. Uh, yeah. But of course that stuff is where you pull into the Kraken in the mix, right? right. Where if you, you use too much of those powers, the Kraken might get summoned. Yes. So these guys have their own okay. uh, tide deck as well, right, you were saying, right. that uh, basically their own special set of skills. Mm -hmm. and each tide deck kind of has its own, similar to how each crew has its own playstyle. each mm -hmm. tide deck kind of has its own playstyle as well. Cool. What's it, what is it good at doing versus what is it bad at doing, right? Right. Sure, cool. And then so moving the, from this, yeah, we have their the actual Mao's Dreadful Curse uh, Heroes Pack. Yeah, Heroes Pack. Yeah. So as we mentioned before, there's a Heroes, there was two Heroes Pack lists re yeah. released for this last yes. month. This is coming out with this, mm -hmm. uh, and it's basically just if you want to add some more heroes to these guys, like yeah. if you really like the way uh, Mao's Dreadful Curse plays, yeah, but you want more selection uh, from heroes, yeah, you can buy this pack and add them, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing that we're the other thing we're kind of bringing in with this is you got. Tons of hero choices. Yeah. So maybe you don't like one of the guys in the base mm -hmm. one. There's other heroes you can kind of pick and choose, and each one is unique. Yeah, and that right. comes that's something that's another holdover from MOBAs, right? right? Like you you can play the game. What makes the games interesting, even in the video game version where there's only one map. Right. You just have so many ways so many to play the heroes, right? Of the so, heroes, right? Yeah. So something that we're also bringing into. So that's the Maslow's uh, Dreadful Curse yeah. hero pack that we got right here. And then there's just a couple little other items. Uh, there's special dice for each uh, faction. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are some available for Bone Devil. Yeah, the yellow dice uh, for Bone Devils. Uh, well support. And then also just cool metal coins. Yeah, these super cool metal coins. And what I love about these cool metal coins is that uh, they actually... Uh, made them kind of brass colored, yeah. but they went back over and uh, almost washed them in a dark black so yeah. that you get to see all the relief really well. Yes. So it they looks look really, cool. really nice. Uh, but the coolest thing is we actually play tested both like everything for own bones. Mm -hmm. We play tested using metal coins because it's something we knew we always wanted to do. And I can't express to you the difference it makes to hear the coins tink. That's a, yeah, yeah like, just the, the sound and the tactile feel of the metal coins yeah. is, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's good. When you right? spin them and you put them back in the bank, yeah. you know a little treasure chest that you maybe you have on your desk, you got a little treasure yeah. chest, right? You throw them back in there and it ching, 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 ching. Yeah. It feels good. It, it, it's, and it's, it's, it's just quality components that are going to last forever, right? right? So, yeah. so. Uh, that's, that's a nice little bonus. Um, if you're one of those, like, I have to have the deluxe version of the game type of guys, it's a cool, it's a cool yeah. feature to have, right? Exactly. Um, moving from that, uh, basically coming up this, uh, it actually just came out this weekend yes. by the time this airs, uh, The Grizzled, which we did a gameplay video for. We did. Uh, Another <laughs> stellar example of you being good at games. Great, great example. Yes. I did well. For Spitzy Reef, I did, I did okay. Uh, sure. Sure, yeah. Sure. Um, fantastic game. I mean, I yes. think every podcast we've done, every time we've done interviews, we've talked at like Gen Con and in the gameplay video, we've talked about this game. Yeah. Uh, it was a surprise for us. It was something that one of um, the designers and developers found because mm -hmm. uh, it had already been released in Europe. They brought it over. Yep. They said we got to publish this in America because it's awesome. Yeah. We played it and we went, it is, yeah, yeah, we have, we yeah. have to publish this because it's to. awesome. Yeah. Um, it's just it's super light. Yeah, but it's incredibly difficult. Yes, and it's fun. It's never you never feel it's never it's, it's not unfair. It's not unfair right? and it's never overwhelming. Right? right. What makes the game awesome is that you you all the game almost does like this amazing inception mm -hmm. where you think you can math. Yeah. how to beat it. You look at it and you go like, oh, if I, you know, if we always do this, and mathematically we always do this, we'll, we'll just burn it awake to always succeed, yeah. you know? And that's not the case, because anything can happen, you never know what one person has in their hand. 
that, right? That's kind of the the unique spin because if if it the game doesn't allow you to dictate everything right. you're going to do, right? You can't uh, sit there and micromanage with the other players. Yes, yeah. I mean you could, but it kind of takes away from it. Yeah, right? you're cheating part of the, yourself. Yeah, right. part of the rules are that you can't just be like, oh, these are... Because the idea is that you're trying not to match three right. of these different uh, symbols. Which is a really clever take on a very standard genre right. in the tabletop industry, right? Right. The match three game, the, the hey, I'm just trying to match, or set collection, basically, right? right? set collection, and but you don't want that. You don't want that. Yes. So that's the cute, like, kind of inversion they did. Right. This is a don't set collect. Exactly. Right? But I can't sit there and go... My hand is full of bullets, so I need you guys not, not to play, play bullets, bullets, or I need you not right. to play knight cards, right? <laughs> exactly, um, yeah. So that's what brings that challenge, mm -hmm. and um, again, not an unfair challenge. Yeah. And it also leads to why you can't really micromanage or kind of use a lot of strategy or yeah. math to figure yeah. it out. And that's what I and that's what I like about it too is you you have that that difficult challenge ahead of you, but you also get the things like the speech tokens. Yeah. You get the one good hard knock card, right? Like, there's stuff in the game that yeah. kind of makes it a little bit easier, um, but the uh, the game itself still is a challenge. But there's ways for you to kind of find solutions. Yeah. Um, but what I really like about the game is it works perfectly in a open the box up, play the game, and it just feels like a fun game that's easy to learn mm -hmm. and quick to play. But it has the same thing that I love about a lot of other games that I feel are real social experiments or really mm -hmm. social uh, kind of investments, which is that you can play the game as a storytelling game too, yes. right? Like you can play the game where, okay, I've got a bullet card and it's raining. That's the background is raining and, the, and it's, you know, and like Rodney Smith said in his video, like one thing he likes to do is like, when you play the card, you explain what's happening next yeah. during our, our mission, right? So I play a card where it's a whistle and it's daytime or whatever. It's winter. It's winter and it's a whistle. And he says, you know, something along the lines of like, uh, as the snow began to call, fall, we got called into battle. Right. And he plays that we heard the whistle calling us into battle. And then yeah. the next person says, that night the rains came and yeah. so did Just the hail of bullets. Of it, right. And you, you're you're kind of playing off that. You don't have to do that yeah, obviously. Right. But what makes that fun is that if you have a group of people who do like to do the storytelling yes. type stuff, who like to have those type of experiences, you can do that. And the speech tokens. Yes make that really cool because they give you basically the first sentence, mm -hmm. right? Like, hey, uh, hey guys, let's strap on our boots, dot, dot, dot. And you can go, let's strap on our boots and charge the guys. And then you say, because the speech tokens allow you to remove a certain right. card, right? Uh, from at least one card, one, I'm sorry, maximum one card from each person's hands. If they have it, you can't know if they have right. it, right? So if you're them, Right. Uh, so the idea that you would say, oh, you know, let's, ma let's march into battle and fight against these, you know, you know, gas mask or whatever, right. blah, 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 you know, something yeah. and you, Everybody lose a guess. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really cool storytelling a, yeah. uh, way to play the game. You don't have to, but it's a, it's an additional layer. It adds something to it. Even without that, though, it's one of my favorite games right now. Yeah, for sure. Play, so quick, easy to play. Yeah. I think our gameplay was twenty seven minutes, and that's with us laughing and yeah. and, and being silly a lot. Right. Yeah. So super quick one. So let's move on to uh, our game night kit number five for Zombicide. Okay. So we've done these before. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how many people actually know that we do this. Yeah. We, so we're trying to trying to get the word yeah. out there, right? Um, what the game night kit is is basically it's an organized play kit for Zombicide. Uh, it has some scenarios in it and it has a special character. Yes. Right. And so what? I think this one has two. Yeah, this one actually I believe does have two. Yeah. Yeah, this has two. So the special characters in this one are basically the giveaways they give at the end of the scenario. Yeah, so, so this is for a store. Yeah. So right? the store buys this does the event, you come and play the event, you get to play Zombicide with your buddies at the store, and then everybody gets a cool new character to take home. Yeah. Um, if you guys are interested in doing that, basically just go to your local favorite game store, local friendly game store, which favorite, favorite or friendly, local. Yeah. whatever, and uh, and ask for them to carry the kit so that you can yeah. run the event. Just tell them you're interested in running the event. Yep, and they should be able to order it. No they problem. should be able to order it, and then it's on the game stores decide how they want to handle, mm -hmm. is it a $5 entry, similar to like a, like, like a Play like a playing card night or something yeah. like that, or, or do they do just an event where they just bring people? Yeah, in there? so it, it's going to vary from store to store, but definitely talk to them if you haven't seen this before. Yeah, uh, and they, I think they can still get the other ones too. I believe right? that they maybe even number one. Which, really? Okay. Yeah, I think I think so. I think um, I, I at least know a couple are still out there, yes. right? Yeah, so a couple are still out there. You could sure. always they could always catch you up if you want to try to get some of the other uh, heroes that were exclusive to those uh, game night kits, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So we also have a new game night kit for Xenoshift. Yeah. Onslaught, which is the first time we've done a kit 
for this game. Yeah, yeah. An organized play kit like this. And it's going to be your chance to go to your store, play the game with some other people, and get some exclusive cards that you may not have seen before. Sure, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, because after, again, same thing that the game night kit with the Zombicide. After you've played the organized play event, guys take your cards home and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, right? everyone can kind of get some cards. And it's just a fun event. Again, it's up to the stores how they run it. Mm -hmm. But um, if you haven't uh, talked to them or they haven't you haven't seen anything for it, it's going to be out soon so you might want to go talk to him and see if maybe you get the ball rolling with that yeah you basically see. just go i mean even if you don't make it happen this month yeah they'll have them in stock you should be able to check them out just uh go to your store and tell them you're interested in running yeah. it or participating in it right and just find out if they if they're offering to that's do a that. good way to do it actually um if if you really like a game you can always offer to to run it to run it yeah as, is as, always coming from a game retail yeah, yeah, background yeah. uh that's always nice to have community people who want to want come to share that exactly. game like like D&D &D night like yeah, D&D night exactly. is something that it tends to happen in stores that the store doesn't necessarily organize but D&D fans want to come and do it right and sometimes it's difficult right. you don't have a, a lot of stores don't have huge staffs so they may yeah. not do organized play exactly. because they don't have someone right. to do that so exactly. Exactly. it's a good way to get in there and kind of give back to your store a little bit yeah. by bringing some people and doing something that you like to do right, right? it's a, it's a win win yeah if you like the store and you want the game scene to be more vibrant there, yeah. you can go in there and say, hey, I'll be willing to run this event, yeah. get this, kind of get the game scene going, mm -hmm. but also you're helping the store out because you're bringing people in and you're not asking them to spend uh, employee hours right. basically running an event that they may, may or may not be trained to do. Exactly. So, yeah. so if, you're, if you're eager to do it, definitely tell the store that, hey, I'd love to do this. And that way the store will be even more likely to order yep. these kits, right? And then, uh, so we also have a Xenoshift expansion coming out. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is something you just go to the store, buy off the shelf, um, that's introducing six new cards, five of each, yeah. to, to the game. Um, and it's the Grafting Lab. Yeah. So Which we did during the Kickstarter, but right. this is basically the retail packaging. Right. Board. So, so if you missed the Kickstarter and you discovered that you love uh, Xenoshift yeah. and you want that stuff, it is coming. Mm -hmm. So the first one is the Grafting Lab, which is right. out this month. Yeah, and there will be a couple more in November. Yep. So future, we'll future talk about expansions, yeah. Right. When we get but uh, yeah, so that will be out. And... Um, and uh, finally this month, we also have some Dark Age releases yeah. from our yeah. Dark Age miniature line, which um, I don't know if some people realize that we <laughs> do this game necessarily, because I have people who play it yeah. um, who don't realize it's a cool mini game, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah. They, they're playing it, but they don't realize it's us, so this is us. <laughs> and um, we have some new models tonight, uh, tonight. Or this month. Yeah, this month. They, could maybe, be tonight. They, actually, they could be out yeah. tonight. Yeah. I think they are out tonight. I think they are out. Yeah. So tonight. They came out at the beginning of the month, so. Yeah. yeah. So there we go. Go pick them up um, tonight. Yeah. Uh, the new Forsaken book came out recently. Yeah. Um, so these are some uh, new models and resculpts. So we've got the uh, Saint Mark on his mount. Yep. That's a new model, mm -hmm. and we've got the Shades and then the Saint Mark. Both of those are resculpts of older models, and because they've been retooled for the new book. Right. And we're bringing the older stuff back, kind of up to the modern age, mm -hmm. because we've had new sculptors, and we're kind of trying to keep things. People love these models and yeah. love this faction, but that's a faction that got made. 14, 13 years yeah, ago, it so right. it's been a while, so we're trying to bring those models back so that yeah. people who love that faction aren't looking at all the cool new models for the other yeah. factions and going like, well, I'm still playing with these ugly ones, right? So you have these kind right. of nicer, yeah. more in line with the style that we're sculpting now. Exactly, we right? try to keep a unified art. I mean, it's yeah. kind of the same idea with Xena Shift, right? right? So you want everything to kind of look the same and look great. Mm -hmm. So you'll be seeing new models and resculpt models. Yep. And if you uh, if you go to the store and you don't see these on the shelf, just go to the guy behind the counter and go like, yep. hey, I'm looking to get Dark Age models, man. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how do I go about doing that? And uh, they can get some special order for yeah. you probably, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, if you want to check out the rules, Yep. They're online. They're free online. Um, yep. We do, you can also pick up a book from your local retailer though yep. too, because I don't, personally I like to have hard, hard, hardcover I book, right? I, nice hardcover to, book. I have to have it. Yeah. So, um, cause you can't always be walking around with a computer at your store. Well, it, even, if, even if I load, like, even I load on my phone, right. I don't like that. Yeah. I want to read a book. I want to yeah. flip to a certain, I want to go to the index and I want to flip to a certain page. Right. I want to be able to answer questions quickly. And yeah. to me, coming from the days of pre-tech, right? Remember when you Stone remember, age. yeah remember right. you're in elementary you're like school 70, and you so. had to write your like your your first like persuasive okay. essay your first research paper mm -hmm. Elma, elementary uh, middle school mm -hmm. and you had to go to the library yeah you remember that gross yeah it was gross yeah so and you're weird. like and you're like I'm gonna um I'm gonna use the computer to look up something on uh, the CD version of Encyclopedia yes. yes. Britannica and they were like. All right, that's cool. And then you go in there, you're like, Oregon Trail. Oh, oh yeah. I'm shooting yeah. squirrels. I shot those squirrels. It's not a lot of meat. I, got I always overhunted the bear yeah. and buffalo. Uh, I always forged the river. 
Well, yeah. And I shot every animal I could. Well, yes. It was important, too. Yeah, it was I, important. They were all rabid at that yeah, point. Yeah. But, uh, so meat back to... Spo the meat spoiled. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, back to Dark Age. Back to Dark Age. And spoiled meat. Spoiled meat. Um, but yeah, so the rules are free online, so you can check it out, see if you like it, and uh, then, you know, hit up your local store and see what they have in stock, and if not, maybe give uh, talk to them. Yeah, just say, hey, hey, hey. Don't know what you're saying. Uh, what's going on with Dark Age? Yeah. What's, uh, what's going on with yeah. Dark Age? Yeah, just do that. Yeah. No problem. They won't call the police. Dang. It's totally I don't cool. think they'll call the police. I'm yeah. going to find out tonight. Okay. I'm going to go to my favorite ghost store and go, Hey! What's going on with Dark Age? Yeah. So, yeah, so do that. Don't tell them we sent you, though. Or do. Uh, or don't. Maybe not. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. not. Oh, that's it. Yeah. We did it. High five. First episode down. Thank yeah. you guys for watching. Uh, two things. Uh, if you're interested in any of these products, you can find them on cmon.com. There's a little thing at the bottom, I'm sure, that's telling you yeah, where you can go. Yeah, somewhere down there. Um, you can also, please subscribe and like the video so that more people will check our videos out. Yes. Uh, if you want us to keep doing this kind of commentative version of the show, uh, let us know in the comments. If you yeah. don't, well, we're probably still gonna do it anyway. Yeah, you could, it's fun for me. Don't let us know what we said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't be mean. Yeah, don't be no. rude. I mean, you could click the thumbs down, but probably don't. Yeah, just don't do that. If you know what, if you don't like it, just move on. Yeah, find another video. Yeah, go the find internet's it. full of videos. Yeah, a puppy uh, video would be good. Puppy videos. Are probably, good. You'll probably like a puppy video. Yeah. Uh, kitty, kitty videos are good yeah. too. Animal, just silly animal just videos. Animal videos. Yeah. Um, and a, let's, a let's play of Oregon Trail. Yes. You could definitely do that. Yeah. That's something sure you can thumb up. I'll thumb that up. I'm going to go find that after this video. But also, if you want to keep up to date with the games that are coming out, uh, follow us on Twitter. Yep. At Simon Games. C M O. You got no, it. Oh, spelling. C M O N. C M O N. Games. games. And that's on Twitter. And mm -hmm. then we're also on Facebook. Just look up Cool Mini or Not. Yep. Um, and, all, and all of our games have Facebook pages. Yes. So those two, if you just go like, oh, I'm really interested in Rome Bones, there's a Rome Bones Facebook page. Oh. Check it out there. Like it. And obviously there's more information on cmon.com for all this stuff. Yes. So. All right. Well, thanks for watching again, guys. And we will see you next month. Sounds good. Bye.